a Big Spark Studios original. Hello, are we ready? <laughs> Fuck. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Unhinged with Chris Clemens, the podcast. I just don't feel like recording today. I mean, we can, you guys just got a fucking cute sneak peek at why I just am like all over the place and really tired. So, whatever. Uh, make sure if you want to catch the next episode or any other episodes, you subscribe to where you listen to podcasts and be sure to catch the video portions on youtube.com slash Chris and make sure to review it. Come on. It's kind of easy. It is kind of a big ask. I understand, but. Please. <laughs> now, um, today is July 14th. And what's going on? Oh, my God. I took Booger, my dog, to... Ugh. Did I rant about this last time? Yeah, I did. So, you know how I was talking about trying to find my dog a fucking roof to sleep under while I'm out of town when I travel? Um, I finally found one, and I took her to a place that actually accepted pit bulls. Crazy. I know. Um... And I took her there and I dropped her off. And let me tell you, I cried in the parking lot. (laughs) It was just so sad. She is like the shyest, most anxious dog. Like it really is like the worst matchup for me because it's just me in a dog form, but with like saggier nipples. Um, What? My dog has fucking... Listen, she's been through a lot. Do not laugh at her fucking saggy nipples, okay? Um, But I took her to a boarding place and... They the way it worked is they put her one on one with um a dog just to, you know, make sure that everything was good, still on a leash. And then they brought her into like the yard because it's like one of those open dog yard kind of things. And I was they were like, You can watch from the window outside, but you can't come. And I was like, uh, okay. Uh, so I watched from a window and oh my god, Justin, remind me to send you the pictures. She <laughs> Like, this is why I'm scared to have kids, because I'm afraid, like, what if they're a loser? I'm not saying my dog is a loser, but the scenario that these pictures say, all these dogs are, like, all over her, just trying to, like, see what's up, sniffing her sniffer. And um, she just has wants no part of it. So then all the dogs leave her alone eventually, and she's just sitting in the corner, just by herself. Are you kidding me? I fucking sobbed. Sobbed. I also sobbed about the fact my passport isn't coming in time for something, but we can't even hit that today. Um, Yeah, I feel like that's enough of an update from my life. There's not much else going on. I did talk to my therapist about my OCD. Like I said, we're not even entering that chapter. Before we carry on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's podcast episode, which is Surfshark VPN. And if you do not know, we have worked together a bunch. And Surfshark VPN is basically a browser extension or an app that you can use on your laptop or tablet or phone, and it lets you surf the internet as if you're in that place in the world, wherever you select. Now, Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in 65 countries, which means you can look at different Netflix libraries, for example. I love, love, love UK's Netflix library right now. I know it's a very niche sentence I just said, but Surfshark allows you to literally watch shows that don't exist on your Netflix account. How crazy. Do I understand how it works? Not at all. What I love is the peace of mind that comes with using Surfshark VPN when I'm out in public on public Wi-Fi's. I know that all of my data, photos, videos, etc., are just safe from hackers and anybody that can access them with, again, ways that I don't understand. What I love especially with sharing a VPN account with my family is the fact that we can have an unlimited amount of devices on one account. That means my mom's iPhone, my mom's laptop, my mom's whatever the fuck else she has, my brother's whatever the fuck else they have, and all of my fucking devices all in one account it's like ridiculous that you have to make multiple accounts with other vpn services if surfshark vpn sounds like something you want to get on board for use code clemens for 83 percent off plus three free months and uh if you don't like it they have a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's really no risk in trying it all i found it to be very helpful especially during the pandemic um and i'm excited to see how i use it not in the pandemic Woo. Look at us go. Anyway, look at us go back to the episode now. What chapter we are entering are the hot topics. And oh, fuck, I said we'd have a better name by this episode, and we just don't. Guys, that, okay, priority in our next meeting, a fucking name. We're not hanging up until it's not <laughs> called Hot Topics. I feel like literal Wendy Williams. All right, time for the hot topics. 
Anyways, that was my Wendy Williams impression. Um, <clears throat> first up from the New York Times, and this is probably the most serious and probably the one that I care to talk about the most, even though I'm low-key scared about talking about like serious topics because I don't want to spread misinformation or like misspeak. Because as we all know, speaking is just not my forte. Like the thoughts I have up here rarely ever make it out in the same way. Anyway, Chris, shut the fuck up. Um, There is the first topic is the Cuba pro-democracy protests. Um, And if you don't know what is going on in Cuba, thousands of Cubans marched on Havana's Malecon Promenade and elsewhere on the island Sunday to protest food shortages and high prices amid the coronavirus crisis. The Cuban Ministry of Health website says the nation of 11 million now has 32,000 active cases of COVID-19. It reported 6,923 daily cases and 47 deaths on Sunday, breaking its prior record just set Friday. Only about 15% of the population is fully vaccinated, the government said. One of the biggest anti-government demonstrations in memory just took place, and many young people took part in the afternoon protest in the capital, which disrupt, which disrupted traffic until police moved in after several hours and broke up the march when a few protesters threw rocks. I mean, at least it wasn't a bunch of morons storming the capital with, like, Trump flags. <sighs> at, at least. I mean... Video showed people looting from one of the much detested government run stores, which sell wildly overpriced items in currencies most Cubans do not possess. People now spend hours in line each day to buy basic food items, and many have been unable to work because restaurants and other businesses have remained on lockdown for months. And a quote says, There is no longer a question of freedom of expression, it's a question of hunger. And this whole situation is just hard to like fathom in a way um and it's just it's just so sad and it's hard because you know i'm speaking personally it's like making this about me um no but it's i'm trying to find ways that i can help and share links and donation things and stuff like that but with the u.s embargo and just the lack of get being able to get shit to cuba it just it feels so fucking sad and devastating. Please read up on more about this and how we as Americans can help Cubans and just the improvement of their overall lives. Um, Cuba, we're with you here at Unhinged. I don't know if that really made anyone feel better. Oh, God. Um, next up, this is from nhregister.com. Uh, man sells business to employee for $1. dollars <laughs> Why does this sound like this could be a YouTuber who, like says, I'm a business girl. Um, Salon owner Pio Imperati took a chance and hired hairstylist Kathy Mora right out of technical high school 15 years ago. It has worked out so well that Imperati sold her his Connecticut business for $1. Imperati has been in business for about 56 years in various locations and forms, beginning with a barbershop in 1965. I almost just said, wow, that's so long ago. But I'm pretty sure my mom was born sometime in that. Anyway, mom, I'm so sorry for bringing that up. You've been through enough. You've already been on this podcast. Um, while Mora will pay rent to Imperati, she avoids a charge that can run into the tens of thousands of dollars to purchase a salon for the equipment, supplies, and clientele. Imperati 79 is now working there as an independent contractor. Oh my God, this is fucking adorable. See, this is... Uh, I don't know even know what to say about this. Besides, do you have any openings? I would love to stop shaving my head in my shower. Um, she's a good hairdresser, a good barber. She's very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Imperati. Um, that's what he told the New Haven Register. Oh, NH Register. I thought this was like an NHL. Chris, shut up. Um, next up. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, D- Disney. Al- we have um a, a two stories on one card because they are practically the same. <laughs> I mean, I've, I'm, shut up, Chris. This is why I don't read off the bullet points. It's like, where's this going? Disney alum Kyle Massey hit with arrest warrant after missing court date. Thank you, page six. The 29-year-old actor was due to appear in court for his arrangement in regard to his immoral communication with a minor. When he was nowhere to be found, the judge judge issued a $100,000 warrant. Wow, imagine being not only called a Disney alum, but the warrant's only $100,000. I'd be like, bitch, let's... First of all, for that crime, it feels like it should be way higher, (laughs) but okay. 
Uh, Massey was charged with a felony last month after allegedly sending sexually explicit content to a 13-year-old girl between December of 2018 and January of 2019. So is that a full year or just a few days? A few months? No, I think that's just like one. Anyways, not the point. This is like the shit I get hung up on the news, which is, yeah. The case is related to a civil lawsuit filed by the girl who claimed that Massey sent explicit photos, texts, and videos via Snapchat. She demanded at least 1.5 million. Girl, go bigger. Corey was in the house. <laughs> Corey knows the Federal Reserve. <laughs> go for his pockets, baby. Um, and then next up, in just... Kyle Massey's next door neighbor, <laughs> Drake Bell, former Nickelodeon star, gets probation for child endangerment. <laughs> what the fuck is in the child acting water? Ohio judge sentenced former Nickelodeon. Oh my God, imagine being sentenced in Ohio. Ohio judge sentenced former Nickelodeon television star Drake Bell on Monday to two years of probation for child endangerment charges after the female victim who met him online and attended one of his concerts accused the actor of grooming her since she was 12. So, okay. So, an Ohio judge sentenced him for grooming. So, what's going on with James Charles? <laughs> Like, that's what I don't understand with this, is that, like, I just don't understand the inconsistency. Like, if we're going to talk about someone who's very much in our realm, if you're, like, on the internet. I don't get that. Ugh. Anyway. Bell was also sentenced in Cuyahoga County Common Pleas Court by Judge Timothy McCormick. Oh, my God. Is that the same Timothy McCormick who does the spices? Do you think? It's, like, a side business spicy um oh my god to 200 hours of community service and have no contact with the victim oh my god i think it should be like a mandatory thing that everyone should just do 200 hours of community service a year oh wait that's like a lot of how many hours are in a year this is where my brain goes when i read things i'm like it's like last time when i was like how many ounces of weed is that 8760 hours in a year Oh, yeah, 200 hours. Well, never mind. Ugh, I don't... This is, like, so fucking depressing. Oh, this one's not. Okay, I'm excited for this one. Scooter Braun and wife Yael Cohen separating after seven years of marriage, according to People. Braun, who manages Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande, among others, and businesswoman Cohen are separating after seven years of marriage, but there are still hopes that it may work out. Who has hopes for Scooter Braun? Do we? No, we. Is it just Swifties who hate Scooter Braun or like we as people hate Scooter Braun? Mostly Swifties. Okay. Oh my God. Did I just practically admit to being a Swifty then if I hate Scooter? Something about him just looks off. Seems off. Not even looks wise. Just. He gives me very much Jamie Spears vibes. I don't. Can I get in trouble for saying that? It doesn't matter. Um, their friendship is the be Oh, God. If your marriage is being called a friendship, it's usually not a great sign. Sorry, Scooter and Yael. Oh, my God. Zayla Avant Guard wins National Spelling Bee, becomes B's first African-American champ, today.com, period. The 14-year-old Harvey, Louisiana. Oh. Reading has gotten better, I will say. Not perfect. The 14-year-old from Harvey, Louisiana, breezed to the championship at the Scripps National Spelling Bee. <laughs> I should enter a reading bee. The winning word was Mariah? Maria? I don't even know how to fucking say the winning word, and I'm 27. Um, a, ge a genus of tropical Asiatic and Australian trees. <laughs> I feel like I deserve, like, a championship medal for saying that sentence. Because uh, she became the first African American winner and only the second black champion in the Bee's 96 year history. Zayla has described spelling as a side hobby. Can you imagine winning the spelling bee as a side hobby? I mean, like, that would be like the top tier goal I would have for myself. She's like, yeah, I'm 14. Won the fucking spelling bee. Side hobby. <laughs> Although she routinely practiced for seven hours a day. YouTube was my side hobby. 
Uh, no, I probably was at that fucking computer for more than seven hours a day. No, not seven hours a day. Holy fuck. I don't even think I do anything for seven hours. Like, not even sleep. She is a basketball prodigy who hopes... <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I know we went over these hot topics together, but... This feels so much more like, what the fuck am I doing besides sweating profusely on a podcast that, like, four people are listening to? She is a basketball prodigy who hopes to play someday in the WNBA and holds three Guinness World... What? <laughs> like, what? Like, is there a fold down after this bullet point that says, like, she's also Willy Wonka? What the <laughs> fuck is going on? She holds three Guinness World Records for dribbling multiple balls simultaneously? Ugh. Oh. God. Wow, I don't know what to say. I'm just thinking about, like, what am I doing? Like, what is my side hobby that I'm doing seven hours a day? I'm trying to, like, I don't even think I smoke weed for seven hours in a day. Oops. Well, these just went everywhere. Luckily, it's on the floor along with my career. Um, now, the hot topics are over. I don't know where I'm going with that sentence. Uh, but now it's time for the hot box, which means that you guys call in to 310-844-6459. I almost have that fucking <laughs> number memorized. I do have it written down right next to the microphone. I don't know why I'm giving all my secrets away. I'm nervous. Um, but you guys can leave voicemails there. And I went on my IG, what is it, story? The unhinged Instagram. I went, a, I don't know, I talked shit somewhere online. And I was like, give me your best celebrity encounters, your celebrity stories, because later in the segment... Nope. Later in the game. Nope. Later in the show. <laughs> Whatever this fucking is, uh, I'm trying celebrity liquor because that is a topic of conversation. And I don't, I think I've probably had some and I don't even know it. Anyways, I thought it would be fun to hear your guys' encounters, stories, gossip, etc. with celebrities. So hit it. Chris, it's Manny. So you wanted the celebrity encounter. So this it's is who? Time that Do I know I them? Do. So Wait, can we start that over? I'm so sorry. I got Philly. I got so caught off guard. I was like, oh, do I? I don't know that name. Who are you? <laughs> it's anyway, oh, it's okay. Here we go. <laughs> Take two. Chris, it's hey. Manny. So hey, man. One of the celebrity encounters. So this is the time that I met you. So I was on flight from Chicago to Philly. This was like a Shut couple up. years ago, pre-COVID. Fuck. And I saw you, but you know like that awkward plane shuffle everyone does like they're in a line. So you were in first class and I'm like awkward shuffling and I see you and I don't know why I did this. Oh, I no. whisper screamed at you. I was like, yes! and your head shot up so fast and you looked at me like I was going to kill you. Well, that's how I and feel every time someone goes, Chris! And I just went, I watch your videos. And you gave me this super awkward smirk and just gave me a thumbs up you were probably high i'm not a yeah i was all. i was and then i just i felt my face get so hot and i just awkwardly walked away no. and everyone was staring at me oh my god but you know what it's okay still love you oh my <laughs> okay wow guys let's start this fucking show over um yeah okay i will say one don't remember that in my defense i don't remember this morning. <laughs> um, yeah, anytime I'm flying, I am on an immense amount of edibles. Um, so I really probably was just like, yeah, I mean, I was stoned. What am I? Fi and I was in first class, so I was probably drunk too. <laughs> um, yeah, I get really awkward when people, like, I don't remember that people know who I am. I know it sounds like a dumb thing to say, but like, I really. <laughs> Anytime in public and someone goes, Chris, I, I like duck for cover. It is like, I'm like, the fuck? So it really isn't anything personal. And the fact that you whispered is like, you're already, I do love you. That's amazing. It's like the people who scream from cars, that shit is like, do I get adult diapers and become the face of them? Um, oh my God. I'm sorry. I don't remember it. And I'm sorry that I was like really stoned apparently. But I'm glad we got to meet on an airplane. Yeah, also, meeting me on an airplane has got to be, like, probably top five worst places to meet me. I am just a bitch. No, I'm, like, nice to people, but I'm just, like, in the worst mood. Anyways, let's just forget that voicemail ever happened. I'm, like, so anxious. I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> like, do we start taking... Do we start trying the celebrity tequilas now? Like, so... Hi, Chris. Uh, Hi. Recently, I was... 
walking uh, near my office in Soho. Uh, oh, come on, Soho. I had a panic attack, so I had to, uh, you know, step outside. Um, and this man was walking so closely behind me. I had my headphones in, it's and I was getting, I was about to yell. I was getting real annoyed. Uh, and then he jumped out in front of me and like waved his arms, and I was like, "Who is this?" So it turns out it was Timothy Chalamet. Um, I will jumped out in front of me. And he was like, hey, hey, I just wanted to uh, ask you where you get your hair done. I'm and I replied, myself. is this a prank? <laughs> <laughs> me listening to this. In what universe is Timothy Chalamet asking me where I get my hair done? But it turns out he really just wanted to know. Uh, my hair was bright orange at the time. It looks like he might have dyed his hair orange for a movie role. But I thought it was a prank. So that was that. He was actually pretty nice, but um, I thought he was joking the whole time. Oh so God. that's that on that. <laughs> um, thanks. Bye. Okay, so not only is Timothy Chalamet just unattainably hotter than I am, but now he's, like, clearly upstaging me and meeting people. <laughs> Fuck this. He's like, oh, actually, I'd love to know about your hair. Meanwhile, I'm like, <gasps> what? So I'm saying my name. Fuck this. I mean, good for you. That's fucking awesome. I'm so fucking happy for you. <laughs> God, I'm so mad that shit like that happens to people. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, Kim and Kanye cut me in line for a carpet and I sneeze on them. Cool. Next. Uh, Yo. Oh. Um, <laughs> Yo. <laughs> All right. So my worst celebrity encounter was probably with Mike the Situation from Jersey Shore. <laughs> Um, I was born that in New York. Up. I was going to visit my grandparents one day in the city. They lived in Chelsea in the meatpacking district around here, whatever. Okay. And this motherfucker <laughs> standing in front of the building smoking a cigarette. And my, I get out the car and I'm like, Mom, that's literally like the situation. Mind you, I'm fucking 11, 10 years <laughs> old. I'm 21, 22 now. I go up to him and I'm like, you're my situ- the situation Jersey Shore. And he's like, who is this kid? And it was just really embarrassing and really fucking awkward because then my he then he asked my mom for direction and we had to explain to him where to go and he just like did not acknowledge me at all. But he gave my mom a hug. That was just really fucking awkward. And like honestly, I'm living if for I was this a New big York star accent. for a show like, like Jersey Shore and ten year olds were watching me, I would be pretty much like, Who the fuck is this motherfucking kid to? So Yeah. That's the team. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye. Um, (laughs) Fuck, I was about to say thank you. That's so nice. And then I got hit with the fucking all caps bye with a period. Um, Wow. (laughs) Need to process that story. Yeah, I mean, if an 11-year-old came up to me, I probably wouldn't say who the fuck is this. But, like, I would definitely be like, where's your parent? And why are they allowing you to watch my videos? (laughs) Does not seem appropriate. That's so fucking random. Like, Mike, the situation. Oh, this was probably, like, years ago, though, for them. I got it. I got it. Yeah, they definitely sounded way older than a lot. I don't know how to feel about that. I don't think I'd ever go up to Mike, the situation, and be like, yo. But that's just me. Do we have another one? I'm just living for that accent. I'm like, were you on Jersey Shore? Did Is that offensive to New Yorkers? Does, does New York and New Jersey have a, a feud? I'm fucking from the East Coast. I live a state below New Jersey, and I have no idea. It just feels like they do. They do? We're all just saying, yeah. (laughs) Who knows if it's actually fucking true? I'd rather spread misinformation about this than (laughs) actual serious shit. All right, what's next? Uh, Hey, Chris. Hey. So basically, a couple years ago, um, I think, well, I currently was still on the air. Um, Me and a couple (laughs) couple friends went to Disneyland. And my friend recognized Miranda Cosgrove. And he's kind of like hiding. <laughs> he had like a hat and glasses on. And um, obviously we were such mega fans. We wanted to go ask for a picture. But she kept like denying the fact that she was Miranda Cosgrove. Honestly, um, vibes. I've thought about and that And it was so like much. really awkward. <laughs> like, she just kept saying that she was not Miranda Cosgrove. Anyways, we got a picture with her. I don't know how. But um, yeah. And maybe she was having like an off day. I don't know. But it was but just maybe so it weird. Wasn't and, like, cross girl. I, I still don't know what happened. But anyway, I just think that's it. Okay, bye. Love you. Love you. What the fuck? Like, 
See, this is where I wish that we had like a submit a picture if you have one. Yeah, she said there was a picture. Yeah, so. that's why I'm saying, guys, we should update that form to be like upload media if you have any. Can we do that? It's a phone number, but I could call. Her oh, this. right. It's a phone. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I'm listening to voicemails. Yep, 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 yep. Good call. Thank you. Yeah, I just have the feeling it wasn't Miranda Crosgrove. Like, I've definitely thought about being like, if someone's like, are you Chris Gunn being like, no, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> Mostly it's just like when I'm like looking so busted. But then I'm like, that is even worse for the person to be like, no, that definitely it like that. This. Vo yeah, that that's like if if that really was Miranda Crosgrove and I was Miranda Crosgrove, I'd feel so embarrassed. <laughs> Not that she's fucking listening, but like she's too busy, like saying the word fuck on iCarly reboot, like inappropriately amount of times in a show. Do we have another? Is this episode even fucking good? I feel like I am, like, on a special mixture of things, which I'm not. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> no, sorry. Next voicemail, please. Hi, this is Ava. And Hi, Ava. In, like, 2014, I think, <laughs> I got to meet One Direction, which was oh my God, that's pretty like cool. <laughs> However, pretty I cool. made a big pool of myself because as I was, like, walking down the line of the five of them, I come to Harry Styles. And, of course, I'm, like, kissing myself because it's freaking Harry Styles. Yeah, no, I got you. Standing right in front of me. I crush totally this man's toe with my foot. I step on his foot so hard that he said, ow. And Ooh. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so so sorry i'm like 16 years old like pissing my pants i was like oh my god i'm so sorry Harry. he's like it's okay love and oh my god i live I for the never accent forget it i did keep those shoes i still have them oh yeah, my i probably broke harry styles toe i don't yeah that's my that's my tea don't think of yourself so highly i don't think you broke harry styles toe um but if it makes you feel any better when i would do like meet and greets at like playlist live and vidcon and shit before the pandemic I think I stepped on everyone's feet, like, the whole time. So, it happens. It's just, who fucking cares? He, honestly, he's, like, fucking Olivia Wilde on a boat right now. He forgot. Trust me. Ugh, fuck Olivia Wilde. No, actually, I'd like to... F yeah, that re that relationship is one that I struggle with. I'm like, hmm. 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 But also, hmm. <laughs> Anyways, is that it? Damn it. That means I have to talk now. All righty. Well, that's the end of the voicemails. Again, if you want to leave one, you can leave it at 310-844-6459. And that was off memory. So can't read, but I can memorize 10 digits. Anyway, <laughs> I did just have to count how many. It's not important. Um, it's time to shout out. Uh, it's time to shout out something good in the world that I think everybody, if you can, should donate to, learn more about, etc. Um, and kind of with what's going on in Cuba, I've been trying to find resources and things that we could shout out, but it's a little tricky. Uh, but I've, we found one that is in the same vein-ish, um, and it's called Partners for Rural Health in the Dominican Republic. And the rural Dominican Republic is home to 2 million residents with limited access to healthcare services. Twice a year, this organization's volunteer health professionals and nursing students bring health care services to residents in 19 villages by hosting free mobile clinics. This outreach is often the only form of health care many patients receive. Um, and your support will provide over a thousand women, children and men with medication and supplies necessary to meet their basic health care needs, including necessary medical equipment, personal protective equipment and education to community members. And, I mean, as we are seeing in Cuba, there's so much crisis. And now with COVID, it's not only exacerbating and it's just causing more issues. And I thought that this was just something really great that we could kind of put our attention to and really come together. Their goal is $15,000 and they're only $4,364 away from the time of recording this. So if you want to donate, I really think we can come together and provide really important shit that I think a lot of us take for granted. Um, and the link to donate and to learn more will be in the description of this episode. Um, but I really highly encourage everybody to donate and just remember that the world is bigger than your world deep. 
Oh God, why? Like, why do I have a podcast where I talk? Like, because today, like last episode, ah, oh, gorgeous discussions, banter, actual humor. Today, Kimmy Schmidt just left the bunker. Like, I'm like, oh my God, what is that? And people are like, oh, that's an iPhone. And I'm like, oh, ho, ho. um, it's time for the rant. I'm just going to get right into it. But today is a different rant. Okay. Today is <laughs> soak it up. I don't know how many other times this will happen. It's going to be a really positive rant. <laughs> it's a very positive, passionate rant. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, we have a timer behind us that is set to four minutes and 20 seconds. Sometimes I stop before that, and sometimes I plow right through that. Um, and yeah, should we just fucking start it? Three, two, one, bam. Oh, no, it's going backwards. That's I'm going to keep going, but I'm going to just let you fix that. Um, I went out for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic, like out, out, not like to dinner, not like, like, homie blacked out. Like, oh, I felt so good to black out in public, like not in my house. <laughs> yeah, that happened a lot. I'm just going to throw that one out there. Um, so um, my friends, Rebecca Black, Claudia Saluski, and Andrew Lau, we all decided to go to dinner downtown. And we went to this place that I think Rebecca had been to a bunch, but I don't think the three of us the other three of us have been there. So we were trying it so fucking good. But while we were there, the cocktails, woo, that is my new thing at dinner is getting cocktails, which sounds like so pedestrian because <laughs> it's just like the first thing you're greeted with when you get to your table um, is like the cocktail menu. But oh my God, I've been just like, no, it's just because it's not like vodka mixed with White Claw in my house. I can't express enough how sad it's been. So we got the cocktails and we were like, ooh, we are feeling ourselves. Claudia and Rebecca drove. Andrew and I Ubered because my car was out of battery, which per at first I was so pissed. I was like, I like driving. I like, I hate Ubers. Like I hate. Oh, come on, mini rant. <laughs> um, so we didn't drive. So I was like, fuck it. Papa's having cocktails. And so then as I was doing that, Claudia and Rebecca were like, oh my God, wait, are we going out tonight? And so then at dinner, we decided that we were going to drop all the cars. Wait, we dropped? I don't... Uh, how... Oh, no, 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 no. We all drove to Claudia's house. We left cars there. And then we Ubered to a bar afterwards. But we pre-gamed at Claudia's once we got home from dinner. And, like, oh, I don't even know how to... Like, this was, like, the best night <laughs> best night of my life <laughs> is exactly how it felt. We made, like, these tick... <laughs> This is just embarrassing. We made these like funny TikToks. We were just like catching up, getting like pre-gaming. Oh my God, it was, a g the bar is just in the fucking toilet. But it was just so fun. Then we went out and we Ubered somewhere, but then there was a place close by. So we walked and then we ended up walking back afterwards, but we'll get to that. It was so wild being in a packed bar. Like it was, it was like watching... New Zealand or Australia like opened back up when we were like just surging and I was like wow cannot imagine and I it happened oh my god it was amazing I will say it is wild coming out of the pandemic having technically grown like channel numbers wise because it was like literally just a meet and greet <laughs> I was like oh okay wow I'm really blackout with people now I forgot this scenario um, but I was twerking on some of you guys. <laughs> I think I took shots with some of you guys. I fell on the floor a lot because Rebecca and I were just like dancing and then like we would just like drop it. And then I was drunk and have no balance sober, let alone when I'm drunk. So I wore white pants out. And the next morning I look like I someone like shoved me down a hill. I mean, it was just like, I'll, I'll send you a picture also. You have, I have a lot of pictures to send you this episode. The whole back of my pants, you can see exactly where I fell. You can see exactly where someone's shoe print wiped away some of the dirt on the ground. It was like really wild. But I, oh, I also forgot that I was like harassing the DJ the whole time to play Nicki Minaj. <laughs> when, here's the thing. When I'm drunk, there is like, I mean, obviously there's some things that I'm like, okay, that's too far. Otherwise, it is like full steam train. 
I, I kept going up to the guy. I started recruiting. So people were like, oh my God, are you Chris? And I'd be like, yeah, can you go tell the DJ to play Nick? <laughs> like dead ass, I was like recruiting to the point where he left the DJ booth and came up to me and said, I don't have Nicki Minaj. Stop telling people to request it. <laughs> <sighs> and then we walked... We walked somewhere afterwards, and my pants, like, had, like, the zipper knees, so I just, <laughs> I don't know why. I guess I was just overheating, so I unzipped them, but I didn't take them off, so they're just, like, around my ankles, <laughs> and I'm running through the street being like, this feels like New York City! It's, like, fully 2 a.m. No. It actually, like, really might have been. Oh, two. Oh. Oh, do I get another four minutes, 20 seconds? <laughs> I'm down for that. Um, and then we went back to Claudia's. We swam a little. I left, like, all of my stuff at her house. Uh, it was just, a, like, a really fun night. And I feel like I'm forgetting so many of the stories. But the the TikToks were, like, probably the highlight. I've watched the TikTok I made of, like, okay, I get it. Let me think. I guess it's my turn. And then it pans to, like, it was, like, wow, I feel full of life. It was wild. And that was my... I don't even remember what night that was. Oh, it was Saturday night because I had to edit a video the next morning and I was like literally wearing sunglasses and throwing up at my desk. <laughs> the end. Before we carry on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, which is Feels. Feels is a premium CBD that will help keep your mind clear and feel your best. It's hassle-free, delivered directly to your door. I've always been pretty vocal about my love of CBD and how helpful it is being able to just table any anxiety, any stress I have, and just being able to think a lot more clear-headed and a lot more calmly. I came across Feels and I was, I mean, I was knocked out because, oh my God, on the bottle, they have different tiers that says like, this is what you do for relaxing. This is how much you do for sleep. I said, one sleep for me, please. If you are unaware of what CBD does, CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness, and there is no hangover or addiction. Like many other CBDs, you just put a few drops of feels under your tongue and you will feel the difference within minutes. What I think is cool about feels uh, is that they have a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you can find your perfect dose and with CBD uh, it's very important to find the amount that works for you and it's going to be different for everybody so the fact that they have people that you can call to help you through this I think is great and finally feels makes it super easy to have your self-care actually be easy with their monthly membership that helps you save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time and so if you want to become a member today, go to feels.com slash unhinged and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That is F-E-A-L-S dot com slash unhinged to become a member and get 50% off automatically taken from what you'll uh, you'll get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Oh, my God, that's done. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Now I get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Um, All righty. This is. So I think this is mostly sparked by Kendall Jenner where she came out with a tequila brand and then everybody really had a lot to say. And I'm not saying what's right. I'm like really not trying to get into that right now. I'm really kind of scared of the elephant in the room, which looks like we're hiding an elephant under a blanket. Um, but if you're watching, there's a huge fucking mound. Well, if, no, if you're not watching, if you're watching, you fucking see it. And you're like, Chris, shut up. If you're not watching, there's a giant mound of alcohol bottles underneath a blanket and there's also no chaser which mom i know that you're not really wowed by that statistic because you don't need a chaser and you sip but i'm worried i'm worried i thought it would be fun to try different celebrities liquor wine alcoholic products that they are putting out and i'm gonna rank them so i'm gonna um, just talk and ramble while I'm trying to adjust my mic stand for this segment. Um, okay, hold on. I'm going to do the grand reveal. Uh, okay, the blanket. Uh, can someone do the grand reveal for me? Because I think I'm... <gasps> oh, this is a lot of alcohol. Oh, my God. Wait, this many celebrities make alcohol? Oh. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm glad... <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Anyways, if you're listening, just you can imagine what that noise and grunts were. Um, but we have this is guys. Whew, shit, 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 shit. Okay, we have <laughs> Ciroc is oh Diddy, I for oh my god, this is actually kind of exciting. 
I had no idea how many celebrities had fucking alcohol brands. Oh, there's Miss 818. <laughs> um, yeah, I... So for this ranking, I know last time I did ranking, we had like S tier, which you guys did tell me meant superb, which thank you to whoever, the two people who commented on the Instagram. Um, but I came up with my own rankings this time because I'm just not a letters bitch. Uh, so there are five tiers that these can fall into. The best one being taking the bouncer home. This is like, you had the best night. The liquor was amazing. You are having like the best time and you're there till closing. And you know what? You've got the courage to take the bouncer home. So that's the best tier. The second tier, the second best tier is Def paying the $150 Uber fee. And that is for, uh, if you're like me, this is just a comfort, comfort topic. Uh, that's when you throw up in the Uber and you have to pay the cleaning fee. And that I figured is like, you know what? I'm fine with it. This shit was good. I'm inconvenienced a little, but like still nothing more than nothing less than an A minus. Uh, middle of the road tier, which is tier three is, I mean, if the company's paying and I think we've all been there. Like I definitely, when I was in New York and I had like a full office job, I didn't care how drunk I was. I was like, well, someone's paying for it. I don't care how bad it is. I don't just trying to feel something. <laughs> uh, so that's tier three. And then tier four out of five. And this is where these are the bottom two tiers. Uh, tier four is might as well be an IPA. I don't really know what a fucking IPA is. I just know that I don't like the taste of it. But again, I will drink it if it's like last resort. And even then I would still be like, mm, I, don't, I think I'll be the DD today. Uh, and then the the worst tier that these can go into is, um, where's the bathroom? And that is a quote that I say a lot after taking a shot at the bar and realizing it's not going down. It's it's residing in my mouth. Anyway, we're just going to start. Um, oh, right. Okay, so we don't have limes, like I said, but we do have <laughs> small pineapple chunks <laughs> and raspberries. So I don't know what the fuck this is going to turn into, but oh, okay. And now my iPad screen just has a ton of raspberry juice or pineapple juice. Should we just restart the whole fucking episode? I mean, I can barely put together a sentence. Um, <gasps> wait, Crystal Head? Who is it's this? A, it's a Crystal Head, and it's a Dan Aykroyd's uh, vodka. Who is that? It's Crystal Skull. No, that's, Dan Aykroyd. That, who is that? Uh, Am I too SNL, young? Like a blues brother at Saturday Night Live. Oh. Oh, Conan? oh I yeah, know Conan. the name, I guess. I just don't. I'm too young. <laughs> Um, oh my god, wait, I drink Crystal Head Vodka all the time. Not all the time, but like, when I'm like, let's do it. I had no idea I was celebr I was contributing to a... Okay, Dan Aykroyd, can you just take this fucking plastic shit? Like, I don't need a bow on it. Oh my god. Oh, here we go. All right. We are going to take a shot of Crystal Head Vodka. 40% alcohol per volume. So what's the other shit? So when it's 40%, what the fuck? Water? Uh, no, I think 40% is like the standard for most. Drinkers. No, but so what's the other 60%? <laughs> yeah, right? We're all fucking stumped. What are we all drinking? It doesn't matter. Crystal had vodka. Here we go. I'm pouring out the shot. Holy shit. Vodka shot. <laughs> I don't like, I like vodka mixed into things. I cannot. <sighs> My toes, I wish you guys could see, I mean, no, I don't wish you guys could see them because I think everybody should hide their feet. They're disgusting. But, oh, my God, they're so clenched. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm, guys, I really am, like, fully tense. All right. Raspberry M. Oh, my God, I don't want to do that. <sighs> Holy shit. We should have gotten a barf bucket. Fuck. Oh, my God. Wait, do we have a bucket? Oh, well, hold on. I'm just going to go for it. Just someone get a bucket on standby. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Okay, honestly, <laughs> ha, ha. Um, that was, I know I made a lot of noises. That was actually pretty smooth for vodka. I didn't expect that vodka shot to be that smooth. Dan Ackland? Ackroyd. Ackroyd. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But honestly, like, bitch for vodka, I might be taking the bouncer home. I think Crystal Head's going... We started off way too strong. Fuck. <laughs> um, I am also taking baby shots, by the way, just because I'm not a fucking 
psychopath. Oh, well, hmm, kind of. Oh, my God. What is this brown one? Long Branch? Um, so that's Matthew McConaughey's whiskey. Matthew McConaughey makes whiskey? Mm-hmm. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> um, ooh, okay, we're going to get to Matthew McConaughey in a sec. We're going to do Ciroc. Ugh. Guys, this is brutal. This isn't a bit at all. Like, I know I am drunk a lot, <laughs> but, like, it's never... Uh, no, the the night I just literally explained to you was straight up shots. <sighs> oh, fuck. Okay. Ugh, this is a lot to handle. This is just... Is this flavored or is it just, is blue the standard? That's the standard one. Okay, this is standard Ciroc. Diddy, let's see what's up. Oh my God. I am acting like I am in the military. Like I am a trailblazer. I'm like getting drunk at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday. <laughs> Fuck. I'm like scared. I don't know why. It's just liquor. Okay. <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! That, <laughs> oh, holy shit! All right, there's a raspberry on the floor that we have to clean up. Oh my God! I hit Diddy. Stick to whatever the fuck you do. <laughs> oh my God! Not this. Ah! <laughs> that tasted like high school, like straight up high school. The only thing that could have really driven the high school point home is if that was green apple. I can't drink green apple. Whipped cream vodka. I remember New Year's, senior year of high school. I was in someone's basement because that's what you fucking do when you're a senior in high school. And someone gave me a shot of whipped cream vodka. And I swear to God, it was like, um, where's the bathroom? I said, um, I need a trash can. Direct quote. I will never forget this. My friend swiped one over, stood in front of it and blocked the whole thing. It was like a fucking Mission Impossible movie. It was... <laughs> No. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Mission Impossible, he's like swinging off like the fucking Dubai Tower. Um, yeah, Diddy, I'm gonna like if that were mixed into something, I would have a way different rating. Just as a straight up fucking shot. Um, that might as well be an IPA. That was that was uncomfortable, and like. Brought up a lot of, oh, not a Casamigo shot. Oh, my God. That's all I fucking took on Saturday night. Oh, my God. Okay, Casamigos is, what's his dick's tequila? John, George, George, George Clooney. Clooney. Yep, I knew that. I just, I don't fucking, I don't have an excuse anymore. It's just, oh, my God. Okay, I'm also using new shot glasses that we will wash out and use for future episodes. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm, oh, I like literally know how this one tastes and I don't like it. Ooh, I smell it. Okay. Sorry guys. I am like the biggest little bitch ever. Biggest little bitch. <laughs> Anyways. Ooh, I, I don't know why my initial instinct is to always smell it. Never smell the shots. I'm saying to everybody, I'm saying to an audience who is definitely taking a shot right now. Okay, I'm going to have a piece of watermelon on standby. Let's see if how this compares to a lime. Watermelon. <sighs> Fuck. Oh, my God. What? Why did I say let's do 10? <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> I probably haven't even had a full shot yet, so I feel at least good about that factoid. <clears throat> oh, I, I was like, Chris, you're about to burp. Move away from the mic, and if anything, I think I got closer. Anyways, here's Casamigos, which, by the way, I just learned is a made-up Spanish word. Guys, I'm not saying what Kendall Jenner is doing is anything, but take that heat and give it to Mr. fucking Clooney. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Anyway, that's like someone making, like, a vodka and calling it pancake fart or something. It's like, what in the American fuck is that? All right, Casamigos, I've done enough stalling. Wait, what? Wait. What the fuck, Casamigos, was I drinking on Saturday? <laughs> oh, I wonder if it's because these are half shots that it's not as overwhelming. Like, oh my god, I didn't even need the pineapple. Wow, that... <laughs> that's confusing. Wow, I had that one written off. That one might be also taking the bouncer home. Wait, but this is like the yellow one, right? Uh, it's the Reposado. Reposado. So... Maybe it's just, okay, so 
The Reposado is taking the bouncer home. I don't know what the other ones are. Because doesn't uh, there's a clear one, right? The Blanco, the, and then there's an Anejo. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so he literally did the same thing as Kendall Jenner. Three. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I know that she has the Anejo, the Reposado, and the Blanco. Oh, my God. That is so wild. <laughs> Misogyny. Um, all right. Now we have... Oh, Jesus Christ. Matthew McConaughey. This... Okay, so fun story. Was this whiskey? It's bourbon. But bourbon. Yeah. Uh, regardless, it's the same color of... Uh, when I was studying abroad in London, I took an early flight. Like, it was like fall break or something. So I was like, I'm going to go somewhere. I took like... I was at the airport at like 5.30, 6 a.m. And I was in the duty-free. And this woman had like a, th- a tray of these little sh- t- samples. Liquor samples. I thought it was wine... So I'm like, oh, this will be great. I take like a sip and I hold it in my mouth longer thinking it was wine and it was just straight up bourbon. And then I spit up in the middle of duty free in front of a woman in like a full outfit holding a tray going. (laughs) Anyways, that's why I love being a world traveler. Um, Long Branch. I don't know if I like bourbon or whiskey. I definitely don't want to take a shot of it ever. So this is going to really... Okay, I don't love the pouring of this bottle. The thing is way too fat. Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Get this under control. Oh, oops. I was supposed to line these up. Seeing as how I can barely operate. Oh, my God. Vodka and tequila is like one category of painful. (laughs) This? This? Like, what do I even chase with this with water for sure? I'm truly so fucking scared. I, like, you really, this is like fear factor for me. And it's just shit that I would have no problems. (gasps) Is this gin? Oh, I don't like gin. I don't even care that the lights are on. I'm like, good. We have to wait five more seconds. Oh, shit, they're off. Okay, here we go. You got this, Matthew. (laughs) Thank you, guys. (laughs) Whew. (laughs) <laughs> that's yep okay that's honestly pretty good too <laughs> i don't know if my body is just completely shutting down and repressing any and all nerve endings i didn't need a chaser for that one either and honestly like that one i would definitely have on its own on ice like i've done that before and i'm into it i definitely need the ice to dilute it down though um because i'm a pussy i would i would say deaf paying the 150 dollar uber fee I don't know. I mean, it was so good, though. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even shiver. Did I? I, like, blacked out. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were um, face. This is, like, I don't know what tier to put this in. Have you guys had this? Not yet. Not. <laughs> Everyone's like, we love this episode. Dibs on the skinny girl. <laughs> um. Uh, no, I'm going to say taking the bouncer home. I'm not bullshitting on any of these. I'm happy to be honest. Diddy, you really are the only one with the shitty product right now. But I do like you, Diddy. I've... Yep. Um, Next up, we have Aviation American Gin. Um, So that's from Ryan Reynolds. Who is that? Deadpool. Oh! Oh, my God. I And Van Wilder, right? We can just stick with Deadpool and, like... Married to Blake Lively. Blake Lively's husband, yeah. (laughs) That's what I was going to say. Um... Wow, okay, I have a, I don't think I've ever actually taken a gin shot, but I don't like, am I allergic to this shit? I'm like, (laughs) Um, I haven't, oh my God. Okay, Chris, just shut up. You got got this. You got this. Ryan, what is it? Felipe, Reynolds. (laughs) Sorry, Ryan Felipe's from Delaware, so like he's always just like a random Ryan that's always on the top of my brain because I'm like, Delaware. Um, Fuck. I just looked at the phone number for this podcast episode, I'm like... If only that was nine one one. Nope. 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 No, 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 no. That one, I'm going to say, might as well be an IPA. Like, I could... De- oh. Wow. I fucking hate Jen. Holy shit. Um, I'm so sorry for the noises, by the way, if you are not watching this. This is a pretty hard one to get through. Um... So was that gin, honestly. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that I did not enjoy one bit. It was not smooth. 
But I also don't think I like gin. But there was a flavor in there that I think is gin that made it, like, not um, where's the bathroom. Anyways, <gasps> is this Snoop Dogg's? Oh, my God. I have never tried the 19 Crimes Rosé. Oh, let's get a bigger glass in here. <laughs> I'm just kidding, kind of. Um, okay, so this is Snoop Dogg's 19 Crimes Cali Rosé. I've had his 19 Crimes, like, red wine, I think it was. Red wine, I'm getting a nod. Do we like that? Yep, there's the bottle. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, it just looks like a bottle of sh pink sugar. Um, <laughs> So... <gasps> I don't know why I just got the very intrusive thought to mix the rosé with the gin. But that, we're not going to do. All right, since this is rosé, I guess I'll have a full shot. Wow, that did like a cool pouring thing, unless it didn't. I don't know. Um, okay, Snoop Dogg's rosé. Wow, okay. <laughs> that... Um, so if you were like me and you pre-gamed with Moscato in college and would have a whole bottle at the pre-game, yes, just the pre-game, that is exactly what this tastes like. This, like, I like my wine having, like, a little bit of, like, a, ooh, yeah, there's something in here that's gonna fuck me up. This just tastes like it's gonna fuck me up in, like, the diabetes department. This, I don't like this. This is, like, really... Like that, <laughs> this is just pink Welch's grape juice that a girl sells on a commercial at like age six. Or is that ocean spray? <laughs> Do you, or does anyone know what I'm yeah. talking about? That little Caucasian girl is like, Welch's grape juice. Anyways. <laughs> um, Snoop Dogg, I really, it, like, here's the thing. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to throw up. But I just don't, like, that is like, I don't think that's good wine. But I'm going to put, um, where's the bathroom? I didn't like that. It just was too sugary. It tasted like a, what is it, a dessert wine? Is that a thing? A quart? Yeah. Oh, a port. Like on a ship. Or is that what a ship docks <laughs> into? I don't even know what a port is. Oh, yeah, I meant to slide those books. Thank you so much. Oh, God. One day I'll be successful at something. Um. Oh, this is Bethany Finkel's or whatever. Frankel. Frank, Bethany Frankel, my bad. Uh, skinny Girl Spicy Larm Margarita. I don't think I like Bethany Frankel. She said something lately, and I was like, ah, okay. You're one of those people. I don't remember what it was. It might not have even been Bethany Frankel, so who knows? <laughs> so uh, I am excited, though, because I do love, love spicy drinks and cocktails and I love being a skinny girl, so. <laughs> um, everyone loves a little extra heat in a margarita, but no one likes the extra calories. All right, Bethany Frankel, you are just like pushing eating disorders. Come on. It's a fucking alcohol drink. Wait, what is this I'm pouring? Is this? Oh, so this is like a pre-made drink. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So this is in the episode that my mom and I were on. Um, this is what my mom was talking about when I blacked out that my neighbor was giving me, but also with tequila on top of it. Cheers to my neighbor. This kind of smells fucking good. <laughs> um, oh. Huh. I'm getting like a nice spicy lime margarita, but if that was a soap flavor and I was getting my mouth washed out by my parents. <laughs> that being said, though, I will be taking this home with me <laughs> because I would never want to put money towards Bethany Frankel, but I do want this. Oh, there's no protein in it. <laughs> I love when they put shit like that on. Um, no, I'm trying to see how strong this is. Uh Oh, it's 9.95% alcohol? This is like a glorified Mike's Hard Lemonade. I mean, that being said, uh, I'll def be paying the $150 Uber fee on this one. I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't. i need something a little more like real. This has a lot of... I know it says natural flavors, but... What does that really mean? Um, yeah, that one's def paying the $150 Uber fee. That was pretty good. Just like... it, No... No, it's it tastes like a fucking Mike's Hard Lemonade. The first thing I've ever gotten drunk off of. That's exactly what it is, but with like a teeny bit of spice. Like a teeny, teeny bit of spice. 
Next up, we have the Finnish Long Drink. It's like a blue can that looks like it should house water. Whose is this? This is um, Miles Teller is one of the co-founders. Do you know who that is? Oh, is he? <sighs> Couldn't name a fucking thing. He's, he's the cute boy from Whiplash. He's the actor. Okay, so you've got a crush on him. <laughs> As you bat your eye. I'm not Miles Teller. Don't bat. Save those eyelash battings for Miles, not me. I almost said for me. Um, okay, so but what is a long drink? Is that, so, is that a Long Island iced tea? There is a history on the back, but no, it's like. I saw that. I was like, like <laughs> wait, I can't do any more reading than I need to on this podcast. It's some old school Finnish drink with gin it's like a boozy seltzery gin Fuck. thing okay and it's five oh it's 5.5 percent alcohol i can do this <laughs> i need to start reading the alcohol percentages before i start dreading it oh <gasps> is this what i think it is oh no wait what what did you think it was i thought it was john legends oh. um okay here we go this is the long drink by miles teller it smell. oh it smells good as fuck oh did you have all the other ones I knew it. <laughs> Holy fucking Sprite. Sprite has been found dead in a ditch. Can you? I can't. Oh, I'm taking the bouncer fucking home. The bouncer's getting a residency at home. <laughs> oh, my God. Miles Teller. Wait, but what is like the. How much sugar am I drinking? <laughs> That's the problem with like these like beverages in a can. Like I love them because I'm like, wow, once again, it's not vodka, white claw and ice. But also like, is it just the Domino sugar factory in a can? Mm. I might sip on this one while we do secrets later. That was really fucking good. Um, all right. Next up, we have Miraval Cotes de Provence. I've bought this before. I had no idea this was by a celebrity. Who the fuck was I supporting? Oh, this is Brad Pitt and Angelina, Angelina Jolie's wine that they're currently in some feud over also. Like, they're going to court. I'm it. team Angelina all the way. Fuck Brad Pitt. Even though when I was, like, younger, I literally wanted to fuck Brad Pitt. Um, anyways, I had no idea this was their wine. She wants to sell her ownership. <laughs> Period. She's like, just get me the fuck away from Brad. Hey, bitch, you seen where Brad at? Ice them bit. Anyway, um... Any opportunity to sing like a Nikki verse, I'm here for. Um, no, no, guys, I'll take the cork out of it. Don't you worry. <laughs> I will take the cork out and talk because we all know how good it <laughs> I'm starting to feel some of these shots. Oh, shit skis. In the meantime, we looked it up. So if vodka is made up of 40% alcohol, the other 60% is water. Oh, so we're like low-key hydrating. Yeah. Come on, ladies, let's get this information. Is a, this is our healthiest segment. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it really might be, which is like the worst part. <laughs> like, this is like the most. <gasps> no. Okay, so I understand why Angelina's trying to sell her share in this company. <laughs> uh, the cork snapped in half mid mid exit. So I've got to stick it back in. What other facts can we read about Angelina <laughs> Jolie right now? Sam, you want to give him some Miles Teller information? No, no that drink is over. Miles Teller, I've told him. I like that. Like how cute his eyes are. And- <laughs> <laughs> Sam starts reading her fanfic. <laughs> She's like, so Miles and I laid in bed. His fingers crossed my cheek. Anyways, I might have written fan fiction like a chapter back in my day, not anytime currently. All right, this is Miraval. What does Miraval stand for? Isn't that like a rehab clinic like Scott Disick went to? Not that I watch Keeping Up or anything, but <laughs> ooh, ooh. it's a resort and spa. It's a resort and spa. That's a California code for rehab. Um, here we go. See, that, yeah. Snoop. I would say take notes, but they seem like they're in the middle of a very intense legal hearing. I'm taking this one home, too. Wow, this is really good. Um, yep. <laughs> Once again, the bouncer is just literally going to be living at my house because... Wait, I was not expecting the bouncer to be at my house as much. These are all, like, good. Well, Diddy, not including you. Um, holy shit. Oh, God, the last one. Miss Conquistador with a K. Kendall Jenner. Um, ooh. I will say that was a pretty satisfying sound. <laughs> this is K. 
Kendall Jenner's 818 Tequila Blanco. So, here we go. Yep, Chris, that's tequila. <laughs> we went on a wine streak or, like, mixed beverage, so I was, like, getting full shots, and now I'm like, ooh, boy. Fuck. Okay, oh, this is the last one. Did I say that already? <laughs> I need to stop getting drunk on this fucking podcast. It's, like, not boding well for quite literally anyone. I can't even pick up a fucking... Why did I almost just call pineapple sardine? (laughs) It was just, like, slippery, and the slice was, like, a little thin. Like, look at this bitch. Oh, I've been supposed to be showing the bottles to the camera. There we go. Yep, we've all seen it. Um, Okay, here we go. This is 818 Blanco. Blanco. Jesus, Chris. (laughs) Just as Caucasian as this tequila brand. <laughs> okay. I don't know what everyone is saying, but that shit's smooth. Whew. I've had a shot of that before. It was not that rough. That was like, I mean, if the company's paying. That. Huh. That. I also think it just might be the fact that it's tequila. Ooh. I just need like a moment of breathing. <laughs> you know, work on my breaths. Um, yeah, that's the end of this celebrity liquor taste test. I think we could make this a series because I think there's more that we didn't even try. But this was a fun start. I was not expecting a skinny girl moment for sure. Forgot she existed in every capacity. Um, Ciroc... I didn't realize how bad it was, <laughs> to me at least. I think I used to reach for Ciroc and be like, this is good vodka. It's not good vodka. I like, I'm like. i not meaning to shit on any of these people. I'm just like trying to give you guys what's up. I don't know for what. No one asked. Anyway, speaking of not asking for things, it's time for the secrets, which I did ask for. Ooh. I'm here with some secrets. I wasn't even fucking scared of that intro this time because I knew it was... Well, no, I didn't know it was coming. I think I'm just sweating out the alcohol. Um, This is the portion where you guys can submit secrets and I reveal them on this podcast. Fucking groundbreaking. There is a Google form in the description of every episode that you can fill out your secrets. And these ones... what What did I make the... The... Oh, drunk stories. Yes, I figured that was a great... Oh my god, I couldn't have planned this episode better because now I'm low-key buzzed as well. Which means the reading of this is only going to be worse. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can submit secrets that you've never shared with anyone. They're totally anonymous if you keep them that way. I mean, if you mention names, you're really selling yourself short. But, um, uh, okay guys, we have to start finding shorter ones. You guys are setting me up for failure. These are paragraphs. This is like a chapter of a book. I went to a college party and started making out with this guy. His girlfriend then came... Okay. (laughs) Uh, Miles Teller. Thank you for the fuel. Ooh. (coughs) I was trying to take a slurp so people at home just didn't have, like, dead time. But then I'm realizing, like, maybe people want the dead time compared to that. Anyway, his girlfriend then came up to us and pulled us apart. She's... (laughs) She then punched me in the face and my nose started bleeding. So I spit the blood on her face and she was so disgusted that she passed out on the floor. (sighs) Everyone thought I kicked her ass and were congratulating me. I then shoved a tampon up my nose and proceeded to get drunk. I will never refer to myself as a business person again. You meant business, baby. (laughs) Holy shit. Spitting the blood on the attacker's face? <laughs> I want footage of this scene. Like, I want, I picture this, like, I don't know why I picture her, just some skinny, tall, white girl with blonde hair in, like, a silver sequin, like, dress that comes up, like, two inches past her pussy, and then she just, like, falls backwards like a plank of wood. <laughs> I don't know why that's the visual I had, but I'm obsessed with this. I'm obsessed with this. I put a tampon up my nose and continue to black out. Uh-huh. I am taking notes. Um, next up. During my senior year of high school, I used to buy half gallons of peach IT. 
Okay. Yep, it's a sobriety test. I'm not driving after this, by the way, guys. So just, <laughs> let's just get that one out of the way. During my senior year of high school, I used to buy half gallons of peach iced tea from Wawa. Wawa! No. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know... <laughs> Oh, fuck. It's the end. People have already clicked out by now. Who are we kidding? Um, Wawa, if you don't know, is like a... How do I describe it? Like a like a glorified 7-Eleven. <laughs> it, no, that did no service to it. It's like a... Do you guys know what Wawa is? You, Sam? I would describe it the same way. Yeah, you, a glorified 7-Eleven. It's like 7-Eleven, but like you'd actually eat the food out of the casing. Right? I mean, I no, I, I'd still eat the food out of the casing of the 7-Eleven, <laughs> just for the record. Yeah, oh my God, the taquitos. Are you fucking kidding me? The hot wings really put up an argument. Tangent really quick. I just can't do that to myself. Like, hot wings from, like, Domino's upset my stomach. Like, Taco Bell? Oh my God, billionaires wouldn't even... The space race is over. It's like, bitch, I'm, I'm going far. Anyways, um... During my senior year of high school, I used to buy half gallons of peach iced tea from Wawa and drink half and fill the rest up with vodka and rock, walk around school drinking it like nothing was happening. I did this on multiple occasions. See, this is the conflict I have. In high school, I had a friend who did this. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm unlocking so many new memories on this podcast. Like, things I... Uh, ooh. <laughs> Oh my god, it tastes like the Miles Teller drink. And let me tell you, it tastes even better on the way up. <laughs> <laughs> that was truly unhinged. That was probably the most unhinged part of this podcast, That like, in total. <laughs> um, oh, I can't imagine being drunk in high school. Like, people who are like, I showed up to high school high every day. I'd be bugging. But that is also because, like, I was such a goody-goody in high school that, like, I couldn't even, even I couldn't even imagine getting out of like not doing my homework to the I mean I got out of not doing my homework a lot in high school. But like even that was scary to me. I can't imagine being drunk in high school like in like under the roof of high school. But good for you girl. Looks like you're having a peachy year. Uh thank you for the pity laugh. Um one time I went to a party and got so drunk that I uh, <laughs> I was just about to say, wow, all of these are about getting drunk. And then I remember that's literally what I asked for. And then I also remember that I am too. <laughs> One time I went to a party and got so drunk that I had an entire conversation with... No. I ruin every story simply due to the fact that I'm borderline illiterate. One time I went to a party and got so drunk that I had an entire conversation in Mandarin, which I don't speak with this guy... I wouldn't admit that. That doesn't sound positive for you. My friends told me about it. I didn't believe them or remember anything until we went to brunch in the morning. And he walked in the restaurant, saw me, and said, Oh, hey, ni hao. I, I don't know what to say. That's crazy. <laughs> like, And that's coming from me, who has burped 18,000 times into this microphone. That's... I guess if you're drunk, you, like, don't know that you're doing it. But also, like, what were you speaking then? Like, hold up. I'm about... If you guys are sending in fake secrets, I'm about to be pissed. Okay? Because that defeats the whole purpose. I'm not saying you're lying. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't believe it. <laughs> um. All right. This is the second to last secret. And <laughs> the fucking longest one. Freaking out. Uh... <laughs> I'm like, does anybody want a guest host? <laughs> I w <laughs> Oh, fuck. I was over at this guy's house recently who I was seeing. We had a few drinks and s I think I... Chris, stop interrupting your sentences. I was going to say, though, I really, after watching other episodes, could take my time with reading and start giving the story life. And that's what I started feeling during this one. This is, everyone was like, wow, that last episode with Britney was like the best episode. And then it's going to be like, what happened? <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> take two. I was over at this guy's house recently who I was seeing. We had a few drinks and started making out and whatnot. I was a tad tipsy. So as one does, I, 
I started sucking his dick. <laughs> Listen, I'm tipsy right now, and the only thing I want to suck is the life out of me. I want to go to bed. <laughs> I thought I was doing something there. I did nothing. The silence. So loud. I... <laughs> Oh, this is the episode that gets me canceled. Bye, three. Um, this was the first time in like a year and a half we both had been with anyone, and so we were both really into it. All of the sudden, the alcohol hit me. Girl, same. <laughs> and I needed to throw up. As soon as that thought came to my head, he says, good girl, I'm about to come keep doing that. <laughs> Yes, guys, this, by the way, is the same secret. It's just taking me this long to read it. So I continue being the trooper I am. And as soon as he comes, I throw up. (laughs) I sucked the puke back as hard as I could. But doing so, I spit his cum out all over his dick. He was very kind about it, though, and still rates it one of the best blowjobs he's gotten. (laughs) <laughs> we have to end the show I mean we have one love but what <laughs> the fuck I don't know why he would be sad about cum all over his dick when that's usually I'm assuming his normal go to when he's jerking off he should be lucky that he didn't have like the entire wait what, did, what were you drinking oh didn't say what you're drinking I mean, he's lucky he didn't have your fucking stomach bile in his hole. And by his hole, I mean his penis hole. <laughs> okay, we, I need to stop getting drunk on podcasts. It's not, it's not contributing to positive conversations. But that's... I, I love that for you. I love my audience. I just would like to say, I am so glad I'm not some girl-defined bullshit that's like, praise be when he works... Everyone's like, nah, he came. And I held back my vomit. I'm I'm inspired. Like, you guys really make me want to, like, go out there and, like, live life. <laughs> Quote Kartney Kardashian. Kartney Kardashian. <laughs> okay, this is the last secret. I'm going to read it real fast, as fast as I can, just to get this over with. Because <laughs> I need to go to Miraval. Um, I was drunk once, and a taxi driver drove me home from the bar. I then noticed I forgot my keys, and he helped me break my window to get inside my home. I don't like where this is going. I then proceeded to fall in, smash my head on the concrete floor. Then he had the guts to ask if he wanted to have sex. Oh, you asked if he wanted... He said no. Wow, that's... I would say rock bottom, but you hit your head on rock bottom and then continued to sink lower. So I'm so sorry. And the fact that you remember it so vividly to then submit it. Good for you. (laughs) What the fuck ever. And on that note, yeah. Oh my God. We're ending the show on rock bottom where it should fucking end. Thank you guys for watching. Um, Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to rate. Be sure to review. Be sure not to drink fucking Ciroc. It's g- gross. I don't know why I'm saying all this with a mushed up raspberry in my mouth. Thank you. That was a moment of silence for you, the audience. Um, make sure to catch the next episode wherever you subscribe to podcasts. Did I already say that? Yeah, I did. YouTube.com slash Chris. Thank you guys so much for another memorable. I don't know. Bye. All right, we can't do alcohol ever again. Also, taking off the headphones? I feel like I just entered a new dimension. (laughs) What? Oh my God, there's noises I didn't hear for an hour. How long was that episode? Two hours? Oh, thank God. These episodes get longer and they get filled with less and less. And I'm like, what are we doing here? I feel like the whole thing will only be like an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, We got a ring. This is the fan who I met on an airplane, supposedly. Supposedly. Or supposedly. I don't really know what that means. What was their name? It's May. Hey, May, May. Hello? 
Hello. Hi. Um, did I meet you on a flight from Chicago to Philly? Oh my God! This is Chris Clemens. Unfortunately, it is. Oh my God! Shut the fuck up. No, I know a lot of people would like me to, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> wait. So tell me more about this experience on this airplane, because I have no fucking recollection. And by the way, we're oh. we're recording. We're so. No, I assume it's okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, I, like, think you were, like, really hot. No, I like, yeah, and that's what I said on the podcast episode. I was like, we just <laughs> we just finished recording, and I was like, I, the thing is, when I fly, I am usually pretty stoned. <laughs> no, so you... When like, was this? Around. What year? No, I don't even know. Like, three, two years ago? I don't know. I went to school in Chicago. It was, like, maybe three years ago. It was, like, Christmas. Oh. Uh, Christmas? What the fuck? Oh my god, I think I know the Chicago trip. I was there during... I, I mean, I just remember it's snowing, so that's the only hint that it could have been Christmas. Wow. Or you were on, like, a, col- a connecting flight. I don't know. I don't know your life. No. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Also, what's your name? Oh, Mary. Mary! Not a single one of us got that correct. We thought it was May. We thought it was Mamory. We thought it was Mima. I mean, we really thought it was anything but Mima. Mary. Maybe, maybe I'll go by Mima now. I kind of like that. Well, consider it given to you by me. So very white grandma chic. I love it, Mima. Like I wish I had a Mima. <laughs> yeah. No, but. Wow. I wish I remembered that. Anyway. Um, no, it's fine. It I'm sorry awkward. that it was so subpar. Oh, my God, no, it was, like, probably top ten most awkward moments of my life. Yeah, no, once again, that's why I'm apologizing. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, no, that's an oopsie on my part. (laughs) I just feel, I don't know why I whisper yelled. Like, everyone could hear me. No, I, I, well, what I said on the podcast was I was grateful for that. Like, the fact that you whispered yelled, some bitches drive by and they're like, grass! And I'm like, Jesus, (laughs) the fuck is that? (laughs) <laughs> no, yeah, it's whatever. It happened. It happened. I hope I see you on another flight soon. You seem like a fun Mary. Thanks, Chris. You sound like a fun Chris. Oh my God, look at us go. Just biblical banter. Mary and Chris and Joseph oh somewhere. We Is haven't there a fa- Noah anywhere? Is there a Noah? Noah? No, Noah. Sorry. It's all right. He might have set sail. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to call you and say hey. I feel bad that I didn't give you such a fun experience, but I was dealing with my own demons called flight anxiety. No, I have that too. It's totally fine. Ugh. Well, Mary, it was so nice talking to you. Thanks for calling into the podcast. Thanks for having a podcast. I love you. Oh my God. Thank you for thanking me for a podcast. (laughs) Look at us go. We could do this all day. (laughs) We really could. I just had a lot of alcohol, so it really could go on all day. Um, That's okay. but anyways, thanks for <laughs> picking up. <laughs> thanks for calling. I had a lot of questions. Um, but yeah, have a good rest of your day. Thanks, you too. Thanks, bye. Bye. She's like, what the fuck was the point of that? And I was also like, same. <laughs> Just call in. Wait, that is so fun. We can fucking call these people. Do you know how many questions I've had? D- so many. I still have questions. A bitch still has... I think we should start getting these people live. I should hear their voicemails and we have... <gasps> and then interviewing strangers on the podcast, but we don't have to go outside. <laughs> uh, I'll take a shot to that. 